Hello all, I'm the brother Kwataz Sayan, coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham Yahushai with another lesson. But before I go on, I want to say Kal Halal Yam Yahweh Basham Yahushai Basham Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth and who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom to the elect of Israel. Gan Akim. So today I want to speak about how Esau, his plan is backfiring in the sense that, you know, he's doing his thing according, uh, pursuing to Revelation 12 and 12, you know, that he's coming with great wrath upon, upon the people, upon this earth. But his plan is backfiring because now with this corona this corona deal you know in all the countries they're saying that you can't have great gatherings you can't have large groups together you know there has to be a, a maximum of three people per gathering you know first he he, he was saying that it should be uh, no gatherings bigger than a hundred, no gatherings bigger than ten, and now he came to no gatherings bigger than three. So in essence, what does that mean? The camp has to be split up. Now where you have one big camp, the brothers split it up into three, four camps. And what does this mean? That you can spread more truth, man. You could speak more truth, you could speak more, you could bring out more scriptures, you know. So in that sense, Esau's plan is backfiring because the, the, the brothers are bringing out more precepts, are bringing out more prophecies, you know. These, this word is being uttered even more, you know, where if it was one big main camp, now it's uh, two, three, four camps, you know. Uttering to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, prophesying. You see? So I want to jump to this scripture. This is the book of Second Corinthians 13 and 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. You see, and that's what, what's happening to Esau. Because he is coming up, coming up on these people with great wrath, you know with his uh, coronavirus and his 5G and uh, everything that comes with it. And he wants to scare the people. So he's like, okay, everybody is supposed to stay in, in, uh, in his house. And if you come outside, you can't be in larger groups than three. Then you're supposed to have uh, one and a half meters distance from each other. So what do, you, what do we do through the spirit? We split up the camp and then, you know, the truth is coming out. The truth is still coming out. Come. Let's go to Matthew 18 and 20. Because this is what Jehovah Shai said. This is Matthew 18 and 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there are there am I in the midst of them. Come. And this is a pure scriptural, man. He says, Esau says, no groups bigger than two or three, you know, and these are the words of Yahweh, of uh, Yahweh Shai, you know, that he says, where two and three are gathered in my name, that's where this, the spirit dwells, that's where he is, you see, so it doesn't matter what Esau is coming with, the, the spirit of Yahweh Shai is still uh, with us, you know, it's heavy upon us when two or three are gathered in his name. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Fourteen. Let me see, bear with me for a second. Gone. 29. This is 1 Corinthians 14 and 29. 
let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge gone so this is this is this is Joshua Palmen this is the work of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai that's being fulfilled it's not of Esau because he thinks he's he's messing us up you know he thinks he's messing us up with the with the coronavirus he's seeing that we are being gathered in great amounts but now he's like no man we can't uh, let this happen so we got to put some sanctions on them you know let them stay apart you know but through the spirit this is exactly what uh, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai wants I'm going to read it again 1 Corinthians 14 and 29 let the prophet speak two or three and let the other judge let's go into the word judge Done. let me turn on my internet in the strong concordance of the bible of the blue letter bible it says strong's g 1252 diacrino 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 which means in the outline of biblical usage to separate to make a distinction you see so when two or three prophets are speaking or coming with precepts you know then there is one that makes a distinction in in uh, what has to come out in what has to be uttered because we all are of the same body so we all learn the the, the same things the same doctrine through uh, the elder apostles of great millstone so the precepts that we have are supposed to be um, the same so if a prophet if a brother comes out with some scriptures then there is one one speaker that discerns what has to be what has to be taught what has to come out what has to be uttered let's go to the book of Romans This is the book of Romans 3, verse 1. What advantage then had the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. So here they're asking themselves, what is the the advantage of the Jew or of the circumcision because when you're uh, from the circumcision that means you're um, actually a Jew that came from Israel you know you have the the Lashawan Kwadash you have the original tongue you know the Hebrew tongue much every way chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai Khan so unto them they they had the the blessing they had the gift of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai to be the oracles now let's go into the word oracle the strong concordance strong's g 3051 lagion 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 which means a brief utterance, a divine oracle. Doubtless because oracles were gener generally brief. In the New Testament, the words of utterance of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. So this goes into utterance. The Strong's definition says an utterance. You know, so you you utter what Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai wants to wants to come out you, you utter what the spirit wants to come out you know you are the mouthpiece of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai and if we go further into that word Strong's G 3052 Lagias Lagias Lagias, which the outline of biblical usage says, learnt a man of letters, skilled in literature and the arts. 
skilled in speech, eloquent, rational, wise. The Strong's definition also says fluent, an orator, eloquent. So that's the speaker. You have two or three prophets standing in front of the camp, two are reading, and one, he utters the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. He's, he's eloquent. He's, um, he's the mouthpiece. Do you understand? So let's go into this word, the root word. Strong's G 3056. Lagos. 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 The outline of Biblical Lucids says speech, word uttered by a living voice. You see? Doctrine, teaching. So you get the point. So you have, according to Esau, two or three should be gathered. Okay, that's what we're doing. And then we have two, two readers, or one reader, and then one that judges. One, that's the oracle, one that's, that speaks. You have one speaker. So, going back to the first scripture. The second Corinthians 13 and 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. So, I hope this video was edifying. And I want to say, Kal Halal Yam, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham Rekha Kodash, Shalom Keep on pushing.